Hi, welcome to the Montana Spine and Pain Center. We're glad you found us. We care deeply about helping you connect to life and participate in things that give you meaning and purpose. We offer you these videos as some of the newest information in medicine because it's important to how we help people get better. And we hope you'll experience us taking care of you as a person, not just the body part that hurts. What we know about pain science today is so different from even 10 years ago that it really requires unlearning 400-year-old assumptions about the way the body works. We used to believe that pain was created in the body part where we feel it. It was detected by pain receptors that communicated on pain fibers along pain pathways to the brain. And the brain's only job was to recognize what part of the body hurt. It turns out that that's completely backwards. Here's the real story. All pain is real. And all pain is actually created in the threat detection system of the brain. It turns out that we're very well protected. We are covered with danger sensors all throughout our body, communicating with the brain all the time about any changes in pressure, temperature, or chemical. This system is called nociception, and it's very different from pain, as you will see. The brain is scanning all the information that comes up the spinal cord and in through the senses, whether we're awake or asleep, and looking for any sign of danger to us as an organism. The important thing that we now know is that it's always up to our brain to protect us. It does this by determining the meaning of all the information it collects in the context of everything else it knows and has learned over time. If the brain determines that the credible evidence of danger in the body is greater than the safety in the body, it will send a warning signal to the conscious part of the brain to make us aware of the danger so we can do something about it. In my house, the smoke alarm doesn't sound any different whether my house is on fire or I'm just burning guard burgers on my stove. The appropriate response to a protective alarm is determined by context, and pain works exactly the same way. Pain is always produced by the brain in this manner, and it's only one of several protective feelings that the brain produces to keep us alive. Hunger, fear, and thirst are several others. How does it do that? It turns out that this threat detection system is always learning, remembering, and recalibrating based on what we experience. So it really relies on context and memory to determine what it needs to protect us from. This means a couple of things, but most importantly it means that pain is not always a reliable indicator of tissue damage as we have been led to believe by our experience. Again, all pain is real. We can have danger that's much greater than pain, and pain that's much greater than danger. They're not necessarily connected. The other important thing to know is that pain is not an accurate representation of tissue damage to the body. As we were just learning, you can have a lot of damage to the body without feeling pain. Think of stories that you've heard about soldiers in combat who don't feel pain until much later. Conversely, you can have a lot of pain without tissue damage. Think about a paper cut or phantom limb syndrome. So what do we make of all this? All pain is real. It's always a feeling produced by the brain to protect us. And the most important thing, especially when pain persists, is to correctly understand how much danger we are in and respond appropriately. There's so much to know about this that we can't cover it all in a short video. There's also loads of information online about all this stuff. So we encourage you to continue to learn as much as you can. Evidence now shows that learning about pain science will reduce your pain. Click on the next video or you can click on the Understanding Pain link above.